Uh, could have stolen, I don't know. But uh, he puts it out that I'm a thief, that I've stolen the believer's money. Uh, because I paid the, uh, the taxes on what at that time was my mother's house. But it was my house by then. It was in my name. And guess what? I never took a salary here. And I've raised, uh, I've raised millions of dollars. We've raised it for all the community and everything. And we never, I never had an account. I just got one this other year in my name. I had to have it in my name. I had it in my cell Islam. Why? Because I ain't going to spend no money. I don't, it don't cost me to live. When I was around on 8th Street, I lived upstairs over the masjid. So it cost little or nothing for me and my family to live there. When we came around here, we lived in the office. It's 11 by 18. We lived in the office. My family didn't like it, but at that time, you know, like uh, we were trying to conserve. When we went next door over there, we lived downstairs. And a dollar and a, what's the name lived upstairs. So we own everything, but we're living down in the basement. So that says something about something. If it don't say nothing to them, then I just let them call me a thief or whatever they was trying to say that this guy is, uh, you know. And here's a guy that never raised no money. None. All he did was took money that we set for him. But you got to remember, we're way up in the game by then. We know who he is. We know who Abdul Malik is. We know who Hashem Alauddin. These people are ruthless. They're ruthless, mean people. I mean, unbelievable, almost inhuman. Like they let the poor little guy come out of the penitentiary, Malcolm the Third, whatever his name was. They know he didn't know nothing about nothing. They're going to make a famous person. You could see in the magazine, he had the Malcolm's ring, that ring, the star, and crush it on that. And he don't know nothing. And they beat him to death hell down in Mexico. That's not fair. Them niggas is rotten, man. They're rotten. They, I mean, let me say, it, they are rotten. Them niggas, and I call them what they are, those niggas is rotten. They're imbalanced. They, they have a wrong estimation of themselves. They don't see themselves in the right picture. Or well, they wouldn't sell themselves. To, what's the purpose? A guy don't even know if it's raining outside and you're going to beat him to death because he has Malcolm's name. You don't have to do nothing to him. Everybody knows he, he comes to a program, a Muslim program with strict Muslims and he got a tender in his room that he brought with him for the program and they're not married. And it's, to him, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. Right? One of the Iranians he was staying with, he said, man, this guy don't have no Muslim habits at all. Prayer and this, that, and another. He don't even do stuff like that. There was no reason to kill him. Can you imagine? Them people are rotten. That's the, the, they come from rotten stock like Mukhtar and Abdul Malik them. Those are house niggas. They are house niggas and they live like house niggas and they, they thrive on, but they don't have no, nothing in themselves so they figure they get power from boss man. Some people wouldn't, don't want no boss man power. But that's because they feel... They don't feel complete. They have something in their life that have uh, affected them. And uh, they don't feel quite uh, human. But 
that badge that boss man give him, give him the authority. I am the sheriff. Like the nigga said out there when they was coming around. I'm the police. So I don't care who you are. You don't come around on my property talking about uh, hot pursuit. You know, you chasing somebody. That means you can go all on their property. So I don't want you coming around here no more. And then, you know, it was one of them scenes where the other police is holding them back. I said, let that nigga go right out there. Out there. Let that nigga go. Slap the urine out of you, nigga. I was younger at that time. Yeah. You know. So nobody's mad at anybody. They can't. If you let them people change you, you're finished. If they let, if you let them make you mean and hateful and ah, da, 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 you're finished. Okay. Okay, world stage, Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui. There's also jealous and jealousy and stuff. If the way Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui presented it at many times at conferences in London and everywhere, that I like this guy, I trust this guy. This guy has the management skills because what I was doing, I didn't realize the effect it was having. Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui had a heart trouble, so he would take walks early in the morning and I would go out and run and that's when I found out I shoot as hard as a walk fast as it is to run. <laughs> so he walked little and I walked with him. We'd be talking and I'd be huffing and puffing. I say, You may not believe it, Doc, but I come out and run when you're not here. And this walking is serious. He said, Yes, it's the cardio. I said, I you know I just that's what I just said. Walking is serious, right? Walking fast is serious. Anyway. Zionist Americanism has been defeated in the public. We didn't whoop false man's behind publicly. Well, I'm telling you, that's nice. Yeah, there ain't nothing they can say about it. We've done it already. We've done it here, we've done it in California, and we've done it with every team. The transfer Shia team that went out somewhere out there, I went and got a whole... But there's a box of Shia literature back there. It's a lot of all the latest things was the latest stuff ten years ago. And they sit around here, and then they claim to love Alul Bait, and then they run out there when Alul Bait was introduced to the Negroes from here. Where did they have to go? Now we got things where you can, you we give you a balanced alu bait approach. They don't want that because the Iranians that had gone bad, that run things in the U.S., they gave them the money to go out there, and it ain't nothing. I said in 1990, which was uh, 20 years before that, something way later. That, uh, hey, you know, you guys like working in a sewer. When you come home, everybody will smell you, but you don't smell yourself. I thought I had said it in 2008, but I was looking through the papers. It was 1990. It was right after Imam Khomeini died in 89 because it was already showing. I didn't realize it till I looked in the... I remember I gave a direct speech in Chicago in 2008 on that. But actually, it comes from 1990, right after the man had passed away. They showed their fangs almost right away. Just like the Negroes show their behavior patterns right away. You don't have to follow them. You don't have to do nothing. 
just they just show that they prefer slavery over freedom. Some people you don't believe it, they prefer slavery over freedom. And if somebody throw you a pass and you go out and you're ready to catch the pass, the Negro on your own team will tackle you and you ask them, why you tackle me? We're on the same team. I don't know. And he's telling the truth. He don't know. The white man put something in him that one of you might get a little ahead of the other and uh, he's going to take your girlfriend or he's going to have a prettier house. And they use that on the Negro. And it works most of the time. So the Negro, if you're ready to go over the line, and it's a Negro around you, duck around and go over there to fool him so he can't tackle you because he'll tackle you. Even if he's knowledgeable and on your team and he knows he will steal the white man and put something in, the, in his mind back there. He don't know what it is. He'll reach out and tackle you. Just before you go over the thing, he'll clip you right away, I'm telling you. This is what boss man done to him. Okay. We can't stop that. All we can do is try to manage the environment where we take advantage of all the good that's left in the Negro. Yeah, there's plenty of good left in him. You got to, I'm telling you. Anyway, we'll get toward a close here. Absurdity defense. Uh... Well, Zionist Americanism has been defeated in public. And that's the way you you give. See, you have to slap boss man around in public and make fun of him in public so the people will lose that respect. Like they do an old, old boss man, the old uh, president now. He's trying not to lose his hat, a poor fella. He, everybody's laughing at him. They don't respect him for nothing. He just, and he's still trying to play like he's the president. You know. Okay. So, not only is the system being defeated, but all of its subsystems. Like the stuff going on around here has been going, that's a subsystem. But look at the main system. It's not winning. It happened. When did they, when is he lost or won a fight? They haven't won no fight. Not going to win none. He can't. It ain't no, you know, it ain't no wins out there. Just losses. And the losses, the people are laughing at them and laughing about them and asking, what is, is that real? Or oh, that ain't you, boss man. Is that you, boss man? Is that you, boss man, acting that big a fool? Well, that's what Allah gave us. The ability to hold on. That I'm telling you from years ago, we knew that was the key. Why? Negroes haven't been successful. They haven't had time. They haven't had longevity. Uh, the long range struggle. They infiltrate them, sabotage them, and run them crazy. And uh, da, 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 da. so we studied what we're doing. And I'm not ashamed. We whooping the stew, or we skinning boss man's legs and his behind. Yes, we are. And he, all he's doing is running around the yard hollering. That's what he's like the little kids. We're whooping them with a switch. A willow switch. You know them willow switches? Them boys hurt. You'd rather get hit with a stick than a break than to get hit with them switches. You have whips all on your legs. Good God Almighty. They'd put up, they'd put everybody in jail now if they whip kids like with the whippings we used to get. They'd put you in jail now. Child abuse. Wasn't child abuse, it was just a whooping. 
right? That's ridiculous. They have put the people in jail now for a little old whooping. And then they wonder why everybody acting so crazy. Okay, new strategic balance, uh, Negro understanding, uh, superior. Uh, well, this is a surprise, I have to tell you. All the new strategic alliances, we had our strategic alliances in our mind, but now more strategic alliances are forming. And guess what all of them say? All of them say, we with each other, whether it's new currency or a bundle of currencies or what, everybody getting together. And they're leaving boss man alone. And boss man.